So Peter, great to meet you. Nice um, to welcome back, first of all, because it's been seven years since Master and Commander. That's I was, right, yeah. yeah, I was kind of wondering, was the break uh, like a conscious thing, or does it take you a long time to kind of find the film you, you want to make and do it? Uh, your way? Look, you know, I would have loved to have moved off Master and Commander. I was feeling, you know, ready for another film. Funnily enough, after it, it was complex but stimulating, and you know, several things I tried, just nothing would get up and live. They were, you know, it was like a frustrating period. Uh, three projects that, that just came apart. None of them do I think had to be made, by the way. Uh, and, you know, I don't miss them. But the fourth one that came along, I thought, now nah, this has got to happen. I just loved it so much. Mm. Uh, do, you, do you kind of enjoy sort of delving into the, the history and the story of it? Because a lot of your films kind of do deal with history quite recently. Oh, I love the research period. Uh, with the historical subjects, obviously, uh, relevant. And so in this case, it was going to the real locations, um, you know, to the uh, to Gobi Desert and to, to uh, Siberia, and then meeting people who had um, suffered in these gulags and who, who, in one case, a man here who had escaped, a Polish man. And what interesting, you know, hours they were sitting with them, so, you know, often with an interpreter. And you're hearing these things just in living memory. They might be you know, an, an old person, but they're telling these things that they saw and experienced. Often the memory incredibly sharp uh, from when you've lived under extreme circumstances. So they can tell you details, you know. So I was, you know, got that on tape and wrote stuff down and put it into the film, lots of it. Mm. The scenery as well is, is kind of almost a character in itself. And I noticed yeah. that it didn't seem like there was much CGI or very kind of little. Was it conscious that you wanted to make sure it was real? and? You yeah, it didn't, you know, we were in, wanted to go to the real places. It's just at times we had to enhance things. <clears throat> I mean, we weren't actually in the Himalayas. We were in mountains in Bulgaria. So we added photographic elements which were from the Himalayas. And so it looked right. But most of the time, 90% was just, you know, uh, nature in its wonderful extremes of desert, forest and mountains. And various conditions. I think we have every kind of weather in it, from rain to sandstorms, snowstorms. Um, and, you know, what a pleasure. Uh, and a contrast to Master and Commander, which was tremendously CGI driven. <clears throat> and I think the actors were inspired by it, you know, that you'd, you'd go out into the real locations. Mm. And, you know, time's very hard. I remember the, the freeze of uh, Bulgaria, they were saying, oh, they were all looking forward to, uh, to get to Morocco and be warm again. And Jim reminded me one day in Morocco, saying, oh my God, it's so bloody hot. You know, I wish we were back in Bulgaria mm. in the forest. I want to ask you about um, the Truman Show as well, because, mm -hmm. I mean, in this country especially, real reality TV, yeah. uh, which is what it's called, is, is very, very popular. And that Truman Show kind of preceded that, so I wondered, was there any kind of reference points you had for television shows then, or did you kind of foresee that this was No, happening? funnily enough, in, you know, what was in 98, you know, it seemed to be, um, you know, fiction, speculative fiction, you know, mm. just... Uh, an imaginary possibility, a kind of satire. And one reviewer, in fact, wrote, you kind of canned the film in America and said, the trouble with this film is that it just could never happen. People wouldn't sit watching boring stuff like this, you know, daily life. Well, mm. <laughs> was he wrong?